Hey everyone, it's Miss Kelly back to continue reading Stone Fox. And we're going to pick up with chapter 5. And little Willie has just learned that his grandfather has not paid his taxes. So they're at risk of losing their farm. So now he's got to figure out a way to save the farm. So let's see what he comes up with. So chapter 5. And the title of chapter five is The Way. The next day, Little Willie met the situation head on, or at least he wanted to, but he wasn't sure just what to do. Where was he going to get $500? Grandfather had always said, where there's a will, there's a way. Little Willie had the will. Now all he had to do was find the way. Of all the stupid things, cried Doc Smith, not paying his taxes, let this be a lesson to you, Willie. But the potatoes barely bring in enough money to live on, explained little Willie. We went broke last year. Doesn't matter. Taxes got to be paid, whether we like it or not. And believe me, I don't know of anybody who likes it. Then why do we have them in the first place? Because it's the way the state gets its money. Why don't they grow potatoes like Grandfather does? Doc Smith laughed. They have more important things to do than grow potatoes, she explained. Like what? Like taking care of us. Grandfather says we should take care of ourselves. <laughs> but not all people can take care of themselves. Like the sick. Like your grandfather. I can take care of him. He took care of me when my mother died. Now I'm taking care of him. But what if something should happen to you? Oh, Little Willie thought about this. They walked over to the sled where Searchlight was waiting, Doc Smith's high boots sinking into the soft snow with each step. Little Willie brushed the snow off Searchlight's back. Then he asked, Owing all this money is the reason Grandfather got sick, isn't it? I believe it is, Willie, she agreed. So if I pay the taxes, Grandfather will get better, won't he? Doc Smith rubbed the wrinkles below her eyes. You just better do what I told you before. Let Miss Peacock take care of your grandfather and... But he will. He'll get better, won't he? Yes, I'm sure he would. But, child, where are you going to get $500? I don't know but I will. You'll see. That afternoon, little Willie stepped into the bank wearing his blue suit and his blue tie. His hair was so slicked down that it looked like wet paint. He asked to see Mr. Foster, the president of the bank. Mr. Foster was a big man with a big cigar stuck right in the center of his big mouth. When he talked, the cigar bobbled up and down and little Willie wondered, why the ash didn't fall off the end of it? Little Willie showed Mr. Foster the papers from Grandfather's strong box and told him everything Clifford Snyder, the tax man, had said. Sell, Mr. Foster recommended, after studying the papers. The cigar bobbled up and down. Sell the farm and pay the taxes. If you don't, they can take the farm away from you. They have the right. I'll be 11 next year. I'll grow more potatoes than anybody's ever seen. You'll see. You need $500, Willie. Do you know how much money that is? And anyway, there isn't enough time. Of course, the bank could loan you the money. But how could you pay it back? Then what about next year? No, I say sell before you end up with nothing. The cigar ash fell onto the desk. I have $50 in my savings account. I'm sorry, Willie, Mr. Foster said as he wiped the ash off onto the floor. As little Willie walked out of the bank with his head down, Searchlight greeted him by placing two muddy paws on his chest. Little Willie smiled and grabbed Searchlight around the neck and squeezed her as hard as he could. We'll do it, girl. You and me. We'll find the way. The next day, Little Willie talked to everybody he could think of. He talked with his teacher, Miss Williams. He talked with Lester at the general store. 
He even talked with Hank, who swept up over at the post office. They all agreed. Sell the farm. That was the only answer. There was only one person left to talk to. If only he could. Should we sell? Little Willie asked. Palm up meant yes. Palm down meant no. Grandfather's hand lay motionless on the bed. Searchlight barked. Grandfather's fingers twitched. But that's all. Things looked hopeless. And then Little Willie found the way. He was at Lester's general store when it happened. When he saw the poster, every February the national dog sled races were held in Jackson, Wyoming. People came from all over to enter the race, and some of the finest dog teams in the country were represented. It was an open race. Any number of dogs could be entered, even one. The race covered ten miles of snow-covered countryside, starting and ending on Main Street, right in front of the old church. There was a cash prize for the winner. The amount varied from year to year. This year it just happened to be five hundred dollars. Sure, Lester said as he pried the nail loose and handed little Willie the poster. I'll pick up another at the mayor's office. Lester was skinny but strong, wore a white apron and talked with saliva on his lips. Gonna be a good one this year. They say that mountain man, the Indian, called Stone Fox might come. Never lost a race. No wonder with five Samoyeds. But Little Willie wasn't listening as he ran out of the store, clutching the poster in his hand. Thank you, Lester, thank you. Grandfather's eyes were fixed on the ceiling. Little Willie had to stand on his toes in order to position the poster directly in front of Grandfather's face. I'll win, Little Willie said. You'll see, they'll never take this farm away. Searchlight barked and put one paw up on the bed. Grandfather closed his eyes, squeezing out a tear that rolled down and filled up his ear. Little Willie gave Grandfather a big hug and searchlight barked again. So Little Willie thinks he's found the answer. He's going to enter this dog sled race that's happening in Jackson, Wyoming. So we'll see what happens when we read Chapter 6.